what I'm going to talk about today is people who like nice clean labels uh, just a, a couple of tips here on how to make your label look better than what it actually is um, I've bought a handful of uh, really different ones I've got a nice yellow label there I've got a, a water damage label there I've got a white label there I've got a, a damage label there where it's been got some nicks on it both sides let's just show you yeah that's uh, got caught in something I don't know how that's happened a label there with a little bit of biro on got another yellow label there which is which is dulled from grime I've got a messy label there with um, uh, glue on and somebody's obviously had a sticker on it and somebody's tried to take it off and ripped it to bits and uh, yeah some horrid labels that, that I'm just gonna cosmetically make look a little bit better so while you're there with your record collection and looking at the label if you think oh, that's a little tatty I think we can make it better okay so a varying amount of uh, different damages there and what I'm going to try and demonstrate today is just cosmetically making it better. A little bit like your girlfriend putting up make on makeup on a Saturday night. This is these are going a little bit better in your record collection. Okay, first one. What you got to do every time um, when you're going to work on a label is run your fingers around it and make sure you don't have water damage. Now there's water damage. And if I take a rubber to that, it's going to absolutely obliterate it because water uh, reacts with paper and makes it so weak it gets flaky. As you can see, that's flaky. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, that's a nice red and white label. I'm not going to touch the red, but I can touch the white. And it just, This is just a soft rubber and it won't affect anything. I'm just going to go on the on the rim there very gently and it is gently don't go go mad at it try and avoid the the black text because that can fade with a little bit of rub and here we go that's just after a few seconds you can actually see there that the, the white there is a lot more and that type of thing is gone and it just does make it look better I'll just rub that over quickly there and you wouldn't have thought it really it's such an obvious thing but the same can, technique can be used on the back of album covers but I must stress you must feel the vine of the uh, label and make sure that it's not damaged in any way okay now unfortunately we've all had records like this one this is a rare punk record in fact it books at quite a lot of money now you can see that that's 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 done for you would think but I'll just show you a little trick here to try and make this a little bit better again using your fingertips try and work out whether that's a tear or it's something laying on top now I've got a feeling that that's a tear and that's something laying on top so we use the good old trusted method of my spit don't feel too disgusted about this I can just rub that around slowly onto a small area don't do the whole lot at once because what it, what, it, what it will do it will dry before you can get to that area now I'm going to leave that on there for a few seconds and don't be too disgusted about this this is the way that uh, people renovate um, uh, master paintings uh, painting renovators use spit all the while or should I say saliva okay I'm going to leave that there for a, a few seconds now these are my favorites because yellow labels they they tend to show up grime more than anything else so we'll have a look at that we'll get close to that there you go that's the beginning in a few in about a minute's time I'll show you the result of uh, carefully using the rubber and again do not rub over the text just in case there's nothing worse than losing a bit of text over it off, off your label you can be as long as the label's sound and it's it's a good one in fact anything that's got a gloss finish works even better 
because it's a little stronger and you can see the and I reckon just after a little bit of, of work I'm gently trying to go in between the things there because what we're looking for is the overall effect rather than and we can't afford to damage the text so we miss that and I reckon after just a few seconds you can go at this as long as you want after a few seconds that looks significantly better now do you see this here these shards those shards of this do not allow those to go anywhere near a vinyl surface okay they will eat the vinyl and it doesn't take long for them to do it either uh, I don't know what chemicals are in this like I said before I'm not a chemist but I can tell you if that lay on there for any length of time it would leave a mark and it actually eats into it oh look it's already left a mark look at that let me try and get that off so what you don't want what you don't want is any of these this shrapnel from this rubber to be anywhere near the vinyl and it will just instantly do damage and there we go in fact it's already left a little mark on there can you see it across there I will have to put that on the machine and get all that out because it's not good for vinyl but as you can see it does bring up your labels quite nicely if I turn it over that's a, that's a really dull yellow and here's a nice bright yellow okay so that is that this is dangerous do not get it anywhere near vinyl it doesn't take long at all as you just it took a couple of seconds there to leave a, a little tiny blemish on it but uh, I will run that through the machine and, uh, and take everything off going back to my horrible water damage label okay now I can see from doing that spit on it I can see a, a little E underneath so that definitely without any shadow of doubt is laying on top of it so all I'm gonna do is take my finger now very very gently very very gently it is a skill I've honed over years and years I'm gonna very gently just give this rare punk record a little bit of love Look at that. If you feel any resistance, don't continue. Just uh, be very, very patient with this exercise because actually the spit will weaken the, uh, the label underneath. So you're actually just as gently as you possibly can, just scraping with your finger now. And you can see I'm actually. lifting away what was that okay now let's have a look at this you have got to be so patient with this you've got to pretend you are actually a uh, a masterpiece painting elevator I would normally uh, take the time to take this off see that what we've got now is stuff underneath now what I'm going to do is exactly as you can see And what you've got to do really is recognise which bits are laying on top and which bits have gone below the surface. And if you're patient enough, see that number two is going to emerge from there any minute. Zero to A. Very, very gently.
Now just be careful because if it gets too wet, this the blue area, which is actually coming back to life, can get so fragile that you will damage it if you touch it. So I hope you get the idea. It will take me quite a long while to to renovate this uh, rare punk record. But as you can see, let's just see if we can get that. It's very, very gently, you're just tickling it. And I can see that A there. And as you can see, it's all coming back to life. But like I say, this is a skilled job really. And this paper is so fragile. Um, I'll show you on this side a little bit more. So we... Licking a finger. And as you can see, can you see that? That's the acid test for saying that there's something laying over there it's not torn away whereas I think that is possibly torn away so I'll just wet it a little bit get my finger and as if by magic we are actually lifting that damaged area away can you see that very gentle I'm applying no pressure into the into the uh, label itself, all the pressure is just at the edge of that piece of paper which is gossamer thin and there we have what I would call the beginnings of a renovated label my opinion on this cotton board is that it's not as delicate as the edge of my fingernail which is just brushing along and taking it off so I'm going to use my finger now here we go With my fingertips I can just feel there's a little bit of paper still to just lift off nicely. And there you go. That's took me about two minutes. So to do an old label is, is a good therapeutic 45 minutes of just messing around with it. You'll have varying levels of success depending on the strength of the actual label itself after it's had water damage. You can judge that by experience and there we go the silver is starting to Just with a little delicate flick of the finger now. I can't stress how delicate you have to be here. Because this is a... There you go. That's the beginnings of the renovation of a, uh, of a rare punk label. And we've done that by uh, deciding on whether that is an actual tear or that is an actual sitting on. And you can tell if it's a sitting on by doing that and seeing if the blue, blue comes through, which it does. Just do a little tad more, just to be as impressive as I possibly can. And don't expect to do this for the very first time and be an expert at doing it because it all does depend on now I'm just about to do that which I don't think is a good way to do it I always think that the back 
and the push is much better than scratching at it. Scratching at it tends to catch. You see the technique there? It is actually the back of the nail and it's pushing. And there you go. If you've got any water damage labels, which devalues a record immensely, um, all you've got to do is, is make a decision, is it something laying on it or is it or is it a tear? If it's a tear, leave it alone because you can't do anything with it. Uh, but if it's something laying on top of it, this method that I've tried to perfect over what feels like a thousand years. But there you go. And there you go on the other side. I will take that bit off there and turn that back how it should be. We should have two nice logos then. Don't over wet it with saliva. Again, what we're trying to do is weaken the top layer whilst keeping the strength of the bottom layer. There you go. We're starting to get there, and that for me would be an hour's job. But, you know, like I say, it's quite therapeutic. Paul is finding this really boring, so next time that we do something like this, I'm going to bring in some dancing girls, in uh, scantily dressed dancing girls to do it all behind me, so it'll make it a bit more interesting for you. Now, this is a horrid label. It's uh, pretty well done for, and in its previous life, somebody has been very clumsy at taking off a sticker and that's a tear that's a sticker over a tear and that is a sticker that's come off uh, or been taken off but hasn't been cleaned afterwards so we use a good old lighter fluid and you've not got to leave that on for very long but just 10 seconds will be fine like magic we can uh, clean that up while you're cleaning it all, you may as well go over the, the silver text because it actually takes dirt off as well, as you can see. Okay. But do not press on too hard. These, these labels are quite delicate. It's not, again, using the fingertips, just feel it's not quite come off completely. So we'll give that a wash. Again, do not get lighter fluid onto the grooves of the record, especially if it's mixed with glue. It can cause you a problem. Especially when it dries, you'll have uh, glue residue in your grooves, which is not, not easy to get rid of. Now, we're getting there with that one. Now you can see that the person who, if I angle it right, you can see that the person who took the previous sticker off has actually took it off with no care at all. He's actually caused a, a, a lift in the, in the paper. And he's very lucky for that not to lift away. This side has lifted away as I took it off. But I'll just uh, get rid of that horrid 218 sticker. God, that came off easy. And we'll just tidy that up a bit. And that's a good example of taking a, uh, a sticker off without lighter fluid, taking it off without lighter fluid but the lighter fluid has gone and cleaned that up if I, if that if i had two labels on there at the beginning i could have taken them off and you wouldn't have really known that they were ever there unless it left a little bit of residue and that residue will fade with a few rubs probably won't go away to, altogether it can go away altogether there's a product on the american market called gugon which i found is much better than lighter fluid um, but I've not been able to find it in England. I'll have to have another look to see if it's over here now. But uh, can you see there's just a little bit of stickiness there. There you go. Uh, it was a terribly damaged label anyway. I mean, and and the record is um, is uh, pretty scratchy and horrid. But it's a good way, a good example of how you can uh, um, bring up a label that is beyond repair really. Now this here is a strange one. It's quite a rare record, it's a Fats Domino on a London thing, but for some reason it's gone and got itself damaged in the process of having it dinked. Can you see that? It's uh, The centre is very very untidy and you see it that side. So what's happened is the dinking machine has come in 
and it was probably uh, a little less sharp than it should have been blunt dinking tools do that and it's ripped away at the uh, at the uh, paper and it's it's caused a bit of a fray and a mess i'm just going to tidy that up and i'll show you how that's going to happen this is brilliant stuff by the way yoohoo it's uh, pva glue I'm just going to take a little scrape of that. Now with the back of it without no glue on it, I'm going to try and put it in place. And then with the, the side that has got a bit of glue. Okay, always when you're using PVA, after you've applied it, again, just use a little bit of saliva. Just to press that down. And I reckon that fray can just come off there. Yep. Okay, so that's that edge done. Again. And that will dry and you won't be able to see it at all. This is a little more delicate. Just gonna apply a little bit there. So you can see that that's that's really nasty. That's a nasty cut. I'm just applying a little PVA. Again, lick your fingers first, put it back down, look at that. Goes into place beautifully. And then we'll just run this knife down it gently. And we have there. Always go with the, 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 the lay, laying down contours and they are we're tidying this up quite nicely to be fair so I'm going to just lift that just there you see that be a lot better with a scalpel I've misplaced mine today so again lick your finger go with the the tear there you go and you have a before and after and again there's just a little bit just a little bit and there you go going with the tear that was caused by a blunt dinker and that's how it looks now but that's how it looked before okay and that's quite tatty and uh, there you go that's added value to that immediately i mean i wouldn't even really know how to uh, accurately describe that floor it's uh, been done by a blunt dinker and uh, that's what what the effect it has and that's what you can do just with a little bit of care a sharp knife and some of this stuff, which is good, I just love it, it's great, because you will not even know that that's there. Don't forget a little bit of spit, and we're away. Okay, so that's that one done. Now then, loads and loads and loads of people have asked me, how do I get rid of biro off a label? Now, really, the answer is, you can't. The more you fiddle with it, the worse it gets, and the way it rubs in. But I have found that this stuff, white tack, which is the same as blue tack, but it's white. It's white for obvious reasons, because we don't want to stain anything. And this is used for renovating um, pieces of paper which have got foxing on it, which is a little uh, brown spots from damp. I'm taking a new piece because I've already used that on something else. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not even sure if this is going to work, but it, this, instead of rubbing at it, it actually attaches and lifts. Attach, lift. Okay, so let's have a go at this. So I'm going to get the white tack and work it. Now, this is a long, laborious job. But it works on biro, but does not work on marker pen. Marker pen sinks into the uh, into the paper, 
and you won't get it off. But biro tends to sit on top. And I tell you what, if it's sitting on top of a glossy label, this actually does work because I've done it. But it will only mask it a little bit. So we're trying to get its stickiness to, to work on it. And it's not making much of a, an impression. I wasn't sure it was going to. But you, you get the idea. And it's something that will work on certain inks and certain surfaces, but not on others. And it's not touching the red, it's not doing anything to that, so it's better than a better than a rubber, much better than a rubber. And if I said that had faded a little bit, I'd possibly be called a bit of a a bit of an exaggeration. But you get the idea, and it's something I'm experimenting with, and I think it's worth an experiment at home when you when you've got an, a lovely flawless label, except for somebody who's going to put a biro on it or whatever. Do not use this on weak labels. That means grainy labels because you can pull some of the grain out with it. it th this label has got a pretty pretty firm a pretty firm uh, uh, finish to the top it's slightly gloss so I'm quite happy to do it but I'm probably going to spend the rest of my life doing this one anyway something for you to try at home because I've had varying levels of success and I think it depends on how firm the guy who was writing it pressed down and also the type of ink in the biro and also the paper level mm, it's faded a little bit and it and that would take some time and it was only be worthwhile on, a, on an expensive record you're trying to perfect but I'll tell you what it does work on it does work on bringing up surfaces like this. Now, if that just has some brown ring wear there, like it has just there, I would take a rubber to it. But because it's like all over, I'm just going to try this method first and see whether we can get a tiny area to look better. Again, trying to try and miss the uh, the text if you can, but I reckon that this or if like me you're impatient and you want the job done, you'll just pick up that rubber in a minute and say this is the only way for me to do it. White tack is the I would say the pro way of doing it. But it is so much longer than the other way. Right, okay. Well, I think that this side is starting to look much better than that side. But let's, let's jump the wall a little bit and just go down for this. And again, I can make this look tons better with a rubber again missing now if you've got the whole thing to do circular movement keep these shards away from the, the vinyl because they are nasty and they will just go and devour part of your vinyl going across the top and I think that this most beautiful of labels, the tough label, which is pretty tough to find, will start to look a 
We start to look. Yeah, no, well, that was grimy and horrible. Look how old that sleeve is. I was uh, 18 when I stamped that. Yeah, 25 bullets line. That would have been done in about 1971-72. Oh, That's when I lived with my mum. And in them days, you used to write your name on the labels. What a, weren't very smart, were we? Your name on it, or I've even seen people write the football team on it and uh, anything they can. Just keep going round and round in little tiny circles, very, very gently. There's a minimum amount of pressure here. And you can judge it. I think that that's come back to life. Okay, now the proof of the pudding is in the eating when I turn it round, and that's pretty damn horrid as you can see. It's yeah, okay, that's how the A side was when we started, that's how it is now. Looks so much better, so much better. And uh, you can look at it then and just pick out little parts that we've missed, and you, you've actually got damn good label there, not a mark on it. And remember that these babies here do not get, any of these shards do not get them on the playing surface. Okay, that's a little tutorial on just making your labels look a little bit better. It's more of a dealer thing just to, uh, just to present your wares a little, little bit uh, more attractive than what they were beforehand. It doesn't take long, not took me long to, uh, to uh, mend a a shattered thing there. Just show you what what you can do when you when you you're clumsy and taking off stickers. Just bringing back the white on that one. I, if I've got time, I will take all this off. And uh, the only one that worries me is that one. I think that might be a tear. But I think the other. I think that might be a tear. But this other stuff that's going to slide off, and I'm going to have a record I can sell with a lot of uh, care and patience. And there's another yellow label. Yellow label just come up brilliantly um, with a little bit of care. Now, after you've done that, check all your vinyls and make sure there's no uh, no pieces of uh, no pieces of uh, rubber sitting there because it will damage it. Okay.